Hey, what's up everybody? This is your host Raja Banks from New York Station Live Streams. Now, my trading journey goes back to April 2016. My first account was at IC Markets. We've moved on to Dominion Markets now. My first account was a $200 account in April. Um, and I mean, hey, um, as you all know, when you start your first account, you know in trading, you can make a lot of money, you can do this, you can do that. It was a $200 account. Needless to say, I blew it, right? Um, then uh, I started back up again, took a course, um, started with around $700, you know. Um, back then, we were trading a very simplistic approach, right? Our approach was simple. Only trade the four hour candles. Now, before we did that, um, read on babypips.com and all those websites, right? And the simplistic thing was to buy support and sell resistance. That's it, right? So back then when we first started, this was, this was our approach, our raw approach towards trading. So here's what would happen. We would look at the four hour candles because obviously when you're looking at the high time frame, like the four hour candle, you know, one hour candle, we know that if the four hour zones are there and when the four hour candles go to those zones, that's it to a resistance, there's a very high probability there's going to be some sort of a rejection, price will retrace and so on and so forth, right? So that was the idea. So we're, okay. What time do the four hour candles start? Four hour candles start at, um, let's say if we're talking about Asian session, let's say when the market starts, it's at 5 p.m. Eastern, then there's a 9 p.m. Eastern, 1 a.m. Eastern, um, 5 a.m., 9 a.m., 1 p.m., 5 p.m., so on and so forth, right? So we knew that, okay, every four hour candle starts at these times after four hours. So our approach was, all right, let's do this. Let's wait for a four hour candle to close. We chose, uh, I mean, I chose six pairs and waited for every four hour candle to close. So let's say if you have AUD JPY, right? Australian, Australian dollar and Japanese yen. And if the four hour candle is at a resistance, just mindlessly we'll just say, okay, like, you know, four hour candle is at a resistance. Let's take a sell, right? <laughs> Took a sell, stop loss is 15 pips and you know, on a four hour time frame, price is meant to reject that level on let's say the 30 minute time frame on a one hour time frame, price would come down, let's say 10, 10 pips, 15 pips, boom, secure profits, call it a day. That's what I did for the first two months, right? For the first two months, started with a $700 account, grew it up to 5,500 in the first two weeks, um, brought it back down to 600, took it back up to 4,000, brought it back down, and took it back up to like almost like 10,000, 12,000, brought it back down. Now, the reason why um, the account was coming down was because sometimes I would remove my stop, right? I would say, okay, you know what? I took a sell at a four hour resistance. Price has to reject, right? It has to, but it doesn't have to do what we think, right? Because like, you know, if we have a bullish trend and the price is breaking resistance and you take a sell, that's a risky trade in itself because now you're counting on the fact that that resistance will hold or if you took a buy at a four hour support, you're counting on the fact that the support is gonna hold and price is gonna reject. But sometimes there's so much volume, there's so much, trending momentum in that direction that prices continues going negative and when price goes negative you're like man i'm just going to remove my stop so when you remove your stop loss then you're going an infinite drawdown right so that's what happened um now obviously in the first two months two and a half months super profitable right super profitable took my account to like twelve thousand and up and down up and down and then a light bell went in my head right and i was like okay this light but this light bulb would say okay um, I have people on Instagram that take 50 pips, you know, they take 100 pips, 200 pips, these big massive gains. So I was like, okay, I want these gains as well. You know, it's an old saying that says that don't fix what's not broken, right? So my strategy, my trading plan to trade on major pairs on every four hour candle at a, at a like, you know, strong zone of uh, resistance or support, it was working. But then I was like, no, I need more. I need more pips. And that's what I did. I started learning about, you know, Fibonacci's and trend lines and harmonic patterns, Bollinger Bands, EMAs, and I took all this information and I put it in the charts. What happened when I put it in the charts? Fucking, you know, disaster. You know, because my strategy was simple. Now I implemented a lot I implemented like a full on mixture of four or five different strategies in my charts and things started to fall apart. They started to fall apart. I would take trades on the four hour time frame and I would start managing the trade on the daily or the weekly if it went against me. That's what happens to most of you guys, right? That when you take a trade, it goes in drawdown. You're like, oh shit, this was a scalp trade. 
And if this was a scalp trade, it's going in drawdown. Let me take a look at the high time frame. And when you take a look at the high time frame, the high time frame is still in your favor. And you're like, okay, okay, this was a scalp trade. Now it's a swing trade. You get it, right? So those are the things that really held me back, right? I, I, I started to lose and lose and lose. And I think, I think the first year I lost almost like $77,000, almost all of my profits. By the end of that year, it was up to like 100,000. I withdrew all my funds and went somewhere else and this and that, but it was just disaster, right? So when those things happen, because you need to understand when you're going through a um, like you know consistent losing streak, when I was going through that losing streak, it's a devastating feeling, right? Devastating feeling. You're losing every day. Your morale is down. Your ego's down. You can't tell nobody because no one's gonna listen to you. No one's gonna actually understand what it means to lose money in the markets, right? Better off that you've lost so much, you don't have the balls to tell somebody, hey man, I lost this much in a matter of let's say days, weeks, or months, because it's embarrassing. And now, what happened at that point, right? When you're going through a losing streak, when I went through that streak, here's what I did. It, this is exactly what I did. I looked at all my past wins, right? I, um, um, what's the word? Um, anyway, I operated on my, like, you know, I, I started investigating my wins, for the lack of a better term. I started investigating my wins and started to see why, why, I had these wins, right? What did I do right? Was I securing positions on time? Was my stop loss in place? Was my analysis correct, right? What was going on? Was I trading the pairs that are supposed to be traded in that specific time in this volume? What did I do differently? And I started to understand that, okay, all of my winning trades were taken in high volume times. You know, you have Asian Open, you have London Open, New York Open, high volume times. And when you go into like, you know, after London close, volume dies down, right? You go after Asian Open, let's say two, three hours after Asian Open, volume starts to die down. You know, a couple hours before London Open, volume dies down. So all my losses were in when volume was down. And when I look at it logically, right? So when I looked at all my statements of losses, <laughs> which I had from IC Markets, now we move to Dominion Markets. Um, they were all like, you know, haphazard trades, like trade after trade after trade after trade. So, so when I was winning, my daily trades were like three, four trades, daily trades, three, four trades. But when I was losing, my trades were like, you know, 10 trades a day, 15 trades a day. I was using Fibonacci on the five minute time frame. I was using EMAs on the five minute time frame, uh, 10 minute time frame, Bollinger Bands on all smaller time frame. It just made no sense. Made no sense at all. You know, so I had to turn things around, you know, because I've lost so much that I said to myself, okay, you know what, Raja Banks, the train of losses has already left the building. You're way far ahead to quit now. And that's what happened. At the end of the day, I was like, you know what, logically, over trading is not working, over risking is not working. What I got to do is focus on one or two trades. It's going to take time, right? It took time. It took eight months for me to lose almost six figures. Now maybe it can take eight months for me to get consistent. Right? And if I can get consistent, my confidence is going to go up. My ego is going to go up. Naturally, my risk is going to go up. And when your risk goes up, your monetary return gets bigger. So that's what I did. I started focusing on one or two trades a day, one or two pairs, and things turn around automatically because you start to understand why pairs are moving. You uh, moving. You start to understand, like you know, why why certain things are happening at certain times. What news means for certain pairs, and so on and so forth. Right. So it's very simple. So if you're going through like a big drawdown right now, just calm down. Calm down, man, and 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 take a step back. Take a step back and start rationalizing things. Because a lot of us, we get involved in our drawdown so much we can't think clearly. So if you want to think clearly, you got to focus on one or two trades a day. That's a simple approach. You guys see us do it in, in the live stream every day. Hope this helps. Take this information in the next week and inshallah you're going to have an amazing week, um, better than the last weeks you've had. Take care.